What's up, YouTubers? Today, we're going to talk about the ProTech TR3X1, the TR standing for Tactical Response. I've always just called it the Tactical Response 3 or TR3. This particular one is the Gunsmoke Gray Edition from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Unfortunately, they've run out of them. I've been holding off on doing this review because this is actually one that I use an awful lot. Um, but once they return, I said, oh, it'd probably be a good time to do it. They ran out relatively quick. But I do know that this is not like an, a sprint run or anything. They will actually keep producing these. So get on their wait list. Uh, put it in your wish list. And uh, this, is, this is a great knife. Um, you know, I actually kind of like this one a little bit better than like the full blackened out ones. Um, just a little bit. And we'll talk about that in a sec. This is a 3.5 inch blade made of 154 cm steel. Um, works great. I actually like it. One of the things I learned about this one with, with this knife over a long period is it does much better actually with kind of a toothy edge and not kind of a, um, you know, a more polished edge. So I like this one. Actually, this one is great just for sharpening up in the, um, the Spyderco Sharp Maker. Does a really good job with that. So this is obviously actually one of my users. You can probably see a lot of dirtiness there. I got some scratches on the, uh, the pocket clip and so forth. It weighs in as 3.7 ounces, comes in at a price of $183. So a little bit lower um, price and you know, more affordable, I should say, in the ProTech line. You can actually get them as low as, I think, $160. If you just get like the straight straight satin or whatever stone wash blade um, and with the channels this particular one also has uh, fish scales in addition to the gun smoke graying um, of this one you know though though it is frosted gray um, like i said this is actually one you can get in many different variations you know they have the operator edition which has the tritium uh, push button there you know for the for the lock and unlock um, you know, you could do that, you know, that costs a little bit more. I, I don't know what the cost of that particular one is, but in terms of comparables, um, knives that you might consider, uh, on the tactical side, I guess, you know, this is the Kershaw launch 13. I've already done a review on that one, but you know, that would be considered, I guess, kind of a tactical knife, um, on the lower end. I think that's like 120 bucks for that, you know, or even you know, the more budget line, the Boker strike, I think it's kind of built pretty tough too. Um, similar blade if you actually kind of you know overlay those on the blade shape is very similar just this one's in a bowie but i think that also is you know again something you could consider in the budget range in terms of kind of more comparables you know at the higher with the higher qualities and build that you have this i mean i can only think of really a couple others you know of course there's the um the protec this is the uh, uh mixed strider smg um great knife that one very comfortable in the hand um but that would also be kind of i think you know some somewhat in comparison uh, you know, the Strider actually has a little bit less sharpened length because of that choil there in the uh, the front choil, I should say. And then also the Microtech LUDT. I think that would also be kind of a comparable knife in terms of build quality um, and use. Uh, you know, so the LUDT I don't really use a whole lot. It's kind of a rare knife and, you know, I won't call it a hanger queen, but I don't really use it a whole lot. So those would be kind of some comparables if you want to consider that. Again, this knife, uh, I think 183, I might have already brought that up. On the pro side, this uh, the first thing I'd like to say is this button is fully recessed. Um, so on a lot of autos, there's something sticking out. I mean, I can even just take, you know, like even this, this microcom is great, but you can see that that button is sticking out there when not fully flat. In fact, let me just put it up against a flat surface. But um, this particular button is absolutely recessed. There's no way you could ever deploy this. You know, it literally sits entirely flat. So that's actually kind of a good thing. So, you know, as this goes into your pocket, it is, um, of course, uh, right side tip up only. Um, as it goes in your pocket, the chances of this ever deploying is, is almost zero. Something would have to hit your, hit your knife in your pocket so hard that uh, you will you literally, you'd probably have a broken leg at that point in time. So that's a really great thing, the recessing of that. I really like the fish scales on this. Not only does it provide some grip, but it also provides for a little bit of double entendre, fish scales on the scales. There you go. Um, I, d I actually like the chalky anodizing they did on this thing. Um, this is, these of course are aluminum scales and the chalkiness, and, and, and Kershaw does a really good job with theirs as well. Uh, it just it provides for good grip in all sorts of um, conditions, so I, I kind of like that. Some people don't really like and take well to chalkiness um, in their hands. It's just a texture thing, but I kind of like it for grip. The chalkiness on the blade, I don't mind so much. I'd prefer it not. Myself, I'd rather have the frosted and maybe kind of, I don't know, more of a PVD sort of coating. Um, or, I don't know, something that's not necessarily chalky. Um, you know, I think Benchmade does a really good job on theirs. Um... 
this this thing is just never going to fail deployment. It's I have opened this thing, used it so many times, and just sat there and just you know snapped it and put it back thousands of times. It's just been fantastic. This is truly unfailing deployment. So in terms of sturdiness, I, I know it's going to be great. Uh, the pocket clip landing I really did like. You can see kind of this this flat space here. Um, where it's not right on the fish scales. So that's really good. And uh, Protec does a really good job with their pocket clips. They don't really pro provide any, you know, hot spots. They're kind of nice and long. Um, they secure well in the pocket. So that, that's kind of a good thing. Um, and actually, one thing I liked about this, I don't know if it was by design, but because my other uh, Protex are not this way and, and a lot of my other autos, but I can, the, the one hand walk back it actually works because the, the torsion spring does not always hold the blade entirely locked up there so i can actually basically get it started on the return back and then safely roll my hand up and put this in forward i don't know if that's by design i've never had to um you know do anything with the pivot on this but uh i actually kind of like that because not that i'd ever take an auto on on a ladder but if i were or if i had to put it away one-handed this is one of the easier knives to put away one-handed again i don't know if mine was an anomaly or what but i like that and then the last thing that really is a great pro of this is the ergonomics are fantastic. You know, I'm, I know this is sold as a tactical response, but I can do pull cuts on this one. Standard cuts, you know, slicing down, cutting across. You can, you know, ice pick the oh no position if you have to get to there. There's just not an uncomfortable position with this knife, you know, right-handed, left-handed. Of course, it favors the right hand as far as, as, far as the button deployment there on the plunge lock. Um, as far as the cons, out of the box, I would say this was probably the, the least best sharpened knife I've gotten from Protec. It wasn't really the best, so I had to just do a little bit of a touch-up on it. But like I said, being the 154 CM steel, which for me is not a problem, um, I, I said, well, let me just get, go ahead and give it a try on a, a Spyderco Sharp Maker, and it worked just great. So, like I said, I kind of prefer a toothy edge now that I know a little bit about this steel some more. Um, last, uh, another one of the cons, kind of, is that this, this is built with such tolerances, and it's not a weakness. But one of the cons are is that literally after just like a month or so in your pants, um, you're going to see, let's see if I can get some light in there. But there's, this builds up a lot of junk in um in there so you do have to like clean this out what i'll do is like literally if i'm carrying this for like a whole month it picks up a lot of oil and gunk in there and just pocket stuff you know shoot some alcohol through blow dry some or uh, shoot some compressed air through it and then uh drop some oil uh, drops of oil in there too so you definitely have to do a little bit of care just because with the tight tolerances of that metal on metal it definitely generates a, you know, a little bit of friction and, and busts some of that out. So just keep it clean. But otherwise, and, and you can kind of tell too, it'll get gritty. You can, especially you can feel it on the return. You know, when you're pushing it back, you'll feel that grit. And it'll also be just a little bit stickier. So, but it cleans up perfect every time. So that, like I said, that just maybe takes a little bit more care than some other ones, uh, other knives that I have. And then, and then the last thing, of course, is my own little wah wah is it's it, it's aluminum you know so it's really cold in the winter months and i actually got this out because as we're entering into the spring i do prefer to have uh you know at that point in time i don't mind i should say bringing out aluminum knives so i tend to avoid aluminum knives in the months you know between like november and and february so for four months of the year i i tend not to carry these so that's why i kind of put this in the way worked out in the garage recently this thing's great um you know one of the things actually i'll show and, and we'll jump into the overalls is what's great about this is it, it's fairly thin blade stock um but it's it's also pretty robust and one of the things i liked about this is i have to tear open a lot of um, zip ties and this one i can actually it's very thin so even in a tight spot i can get it in and under and then pop those off so and this has had no problems at all um you know obviously it's going to win against that zip tie and then a piece of wood or you know four-wheel driving equipment is usually stuff that i'm using zip ties too. So I guess that really would have been in the strength section is it has a, um, you know, it has a, a decently strong tip with the way that this is ground in the swedge. You know, I guess if I had to have one design choice, I might have liked this swedge to go all the way up, but then I put it away and I, under, I understand, you know, kind of how they design this. And plus it would be a landing for your thumb. You know, that's just a personal preference. Overall though, this is, you know, if you can carry an automatic knife and, uh, you know, you want a Protec, you want great quality made in the USA build. This is a fantastic build. It's it's sold as Tactical Response TR3, 
but for me, the design of this blade, the carry, the use, you know, in my pocket, it's, this is actually a great EDC knife, and I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I guess they're shooting for first responders, but what a great, uh, really, everyday carry and just use out in the garage or whatever you want. So, yeah, like I said, Smoky Mountain Knife Works is the um, exclusive dealer of this. One. And, um, you, you know, throw this in your wish list if you like it. Otherwise, they have plenty of other models at plenty of other sites. And uh, hope you did enjoy this and find it of some use. If you did, uh, go ahead and like and subscribe, and have a great day. Take care now.